This will be a tutorial on Dijkstra's algorithm for computing single source shortest paths. We'll quickly uh, go over how the algorithm works. Then we will look at an image description. Then we'll look at the pseudocode and then we'll describe the running time. So very quickly, uh, Dijkstra finds the shortest path from one single source vertex to all connected vertices in a weighted graph. Does not work on a graph with negative weight edges. If you want to know why, then look at the Bellman Ford video on this channel where we compare Bellman Ford to Dijkstra's and we show why Bellman Ford does work with negative weight edges and why Dijkstra's does not for many cases. Um, so the algorithm will start by letting the let the distance from starting vertex to itself equal zero. That's intuitive. And then we'll let by default the distance from the starting vertex to all other vertices equals positive infinity. From there we're going to try to make uh, optimizations and get that down from positive infinity. Uh, we're going to store all of the vertices in a priority queue stored uh, sorted by distance from the start vertex. So the minimum element is going to have the shortest distance to the start vertex and the maximum element is going to have the maximum distance. And this priority queue is uh, implemented using a heap. Um, that'll be important for uh, our running time analysis. Um, so we're going to iter iteratively remove the minimum vertex from the priority queue and perform the relaxation procedure, which uh, is where we check for a shorter path. So this will become more clear during this image demonstration. So we select A as our start vertex. Obviously, these are edges, vertices, and edge weights. And so we just lay out all our vertices just in alphabetical order. And so we'll start with A because A is our source. So the distance from A to A is going to be obviously the shortest path. It's our default already at zero. And we put a purple square around it, which means that's the shortest path. So Dijkstra's is going to use the greedy method. And it's going to assume that these local optimizations are global optimizations. So again, you'll understand more what I mean by that if you watch the Bellman Ford video where we compare it to Dijkstra's. Um, so next we're going to go A to B is 2. That's better than infinity, so we write 2. A to C is 5. That's better than infinity, we write 5. And now A is not immediately uh, connected to D. E, F, or G. It's not uh, immediately directly connected. So we can't say that we have a better path yet, so we'll just leave the defaults. So now we look at what was the shortest path we had here besides the one that we've already removed as the uh, global shortest. So it was this B, this 2. It was the least. So now we go down here and we write B. And so now we're starting from vertex B, and we're saying um, we don't compare it to A again. Once we find this global shortest path, we don't have to compare anything to it afterwards. We're not going to find anything shorter than the shortest. So uh, we just compare B, B to itself. It's still 2, and that's the shortest path. When we compare something to itself, that's the time when we put the square around it and we say that's the shortest. Um, basically once we decide that it was the smallest here. So B to C now, it's not connected directly, so it's still 5. B to D, it is connected directly. Um, so that's 3. So to get to B, we were at 2. Now to get to D, that's an extra 1. So it's 3, that's better than infinity. And we, we do make it to E, it's directly connected to B. So we were at 2 to B, and then another 2 to E, better than positive infinity. Not connected to F, not directly connected to G. Okay, so we take B. The shortest path from A to B is 2. Um, so what was the next shortest? D. So down here we write D. And so what do we got? D to C, is it connected? No. D to D. 
Okay, we were at 3, so that's the global shortest path from source A to vertex D. E, we are connected. Um, one to, so we were at 3, and another one is 4. We're already at 4 for E. D to F, it's not directly connected. D to G, it is. So we were 3 to get to D. And then another 7, that's 10 to G. So that's shorter than positive infinity. So now, what was our shortest? There was this 4, it was E. So we write E. And E to C, we are connected. Uh, but the shortest path, how many were we to E? 4 to E. So it took us four to get here, but in the shortest path, which was like this. And then two more to get to C would be six. That's not as good as the five we already had, so we just leave, keep the five. So E to E, it was four, it's still four. We're at E to E, we put the box. That's the shortest path from A to E. F, um, E to F, we do make it to F. Finally, we get to take out this infinity. And it, it took us four to get here, one more is five. And then to G, it took us four to get here, one more is five, that's better than 10. And so it was the smallest, these were all equal, so we'll just take the C, the first one. It's five. And so C to C to F, so we're five and then six, that's 11. That doesn't beat five, not connected to G, so we'll take Smallest, they're both the same. We'll take this F. Um, we'll just pick the F. And that's the F's uh, shortest path from A, 5. And so F to G, it does connect to G here. And we're 5 to F plus 3 is 8. That's not better than what we had for G. So now we're at G, 5. It's the last number. We'll put the box around it. That's the shortest path from source A to G. So the shortest paths are all here with boxes around them. We got A to A, A to B, A to C, A to D, E, F, G. So that's how it works. Here's the pseudocode that does that. So this part here is where we're going to set the default values. The start vertex distance from itself is going to be zero. Every other vertex is going to start with uh, a distance of positive infinity by default. Um, next, we're going to let a priority queue called Q contain all of the vertices of G using uh, distance labels as keys. And then while Q is not empty, we're going to this is going to be our while loop here. U is going to be a vertex. Uh, it's going to be got from Q dot remove min. We're going to remove the minimum um, vertex, which is what we were doing sort of here, like taking this B from the minimum, or this U or this zero. It was minimum because these were all infinity by default. So that's why we started with A because it, it was zero and all the rest were infinity, so it was the, it got pulled by uh, remove min, sorry. Um, anyways, for each vertex Z adjacent to U, such as Z is in Q, so that's why we're looking at adjacent, right, from A to C to B, and then we said, well, these aren't adjacent, they're not directly connected, so don't worry about those. Um, we're looking at only adjacent ones, and then if the distance to the vertex already, whatever our current shortest path was. So say we got to uh, E and 4, and then plus w, plus the weight from U to Z. So we got here in 4, and now the weight from U, which is E, to Z, let's say it's G, because Z is adjacent, so it's plus 1. So 4 plus 1. And we say uh, if it's less than just the regular distance to z well at that at one time this was 10 right so this was 10 and so we said if the distance that brought us to e the shortest distance that brought us to e so far plus this edge which was uh 4 plus 1 is 5 it was less than 10 so this was true this if statement and so we just set the distance to g equal to 4 plus 1 which was 5 and then we change the key of the vertex Z and Q to DZ. This is actually a not, not trivial line, 
takes some time because of our priority queue. We'll see that in the next slide. And then I just returned all of the distance labels for each vertex. So here's the running time. It's a little bit complicated because we're using this priority queue. It's based on the heap. We had to do some reordering, like things that sound kind of simple, like remove min and change the key actually end up taking log n time. So <clears throat> where m is the number of edges and n is the number of vertices, first thing we do is assign uh, initial key values in on using bottom-up heap construction. Um, this won't matter. The, the while loop will be longer. So, um, inside the while loop, we've removed the minimum element from and repair the order of priority Q, Q in order log N time. So, <coughs> that's this line here. U equals Q dot remove min. Since it's a priority Q, when we remove the minimum element, it's going to be at the root of the heap. And so we're going to have to use this, I think it's called, they call it bubbling up, to sort of fill that in in reorder. That's going to take log n time to just to remove min. Um, and then also inside the while loop, we perform the relaxation procedure, which takes O degree V log n time. So that's because we traverse the vertices adjacent to V in time proportional to their number. So we're, we're at a vertex, we check out all its neighbors, that's degree V, where degree is the number of incident edges on the vertex, number of edges coming into it, leading to neighboring vertices. Uh, then if a condition is true, if that distance was less than the one it already had, we're going to change the key of that vertex in Q uh, in order log n time, similarly to how it took uh, log n time to remove min from that Q because it's, it's heat based. If we change the key here, um, so change update the distance to the shorter path distance, it's going to take log n time because we're going to have to restructure that uh, that heap. So that's log n time for that. So a simplification of the total time so far is order log n plus degree v log n. And so we can use a little bit of math, a little bit of factoring here to simplify this to order 1 plus degree v in brackets log n uh, we just factored out uh, with a log n here. Um, and then we have to remember that this applies for each vertex in G. It's not for the whole uh, algorithm. This is for each vertex. Um, it's log n to remove the min, right? And then log n to, or degree v log n to do the uh, relaxation. That's happening every vertex, each step that we did in that uh, image. So one times each vertex in G is N, number of vertices is gonna be N, and the degree V times each vertex equals two M. Uh, that's two times the number of edges. Um, so the degree V the degree of the vertex across every vertex in the graph is going to be twice the number of edges because each edge is connected to two vertices. Just think about that for a second. Um, so we'll simplify this to order n plus 2m log n, which can be further simplified to O n plus m log n. So that's Dijkstra's little bit more complicated implementation because of the priority queue uh, that was heat based so hopefully I'll get a video up soon uh, going over heat based priority queues uh, so that it's more clear but that's Dijkstra's algorithm for single source shortest paths